Hello everyone, welcome once again to Rerun Videos, soon to be Rerun Productions in 2005, as we are now a multimedia company, of course, video and DVD productions of all these Speedway meetings on offer to you. But that's what is on offer today, the Elite League Knockout Cup, glistening here in the brilliant sunshine at Wimborne Road Pool. Everything's in fine fettle for this second leg clash. It's the last day of the season. It's the 31st of October. It is Halloween, but will it be the witches ruling the roost here over the Pirates? Of course, Paul, very dominant here around their home circuit, and the witches holding a six-point lead after the first leg at Foxhall ten days ago. They won that 48 points to 42. Can they do enough to hang on and claim their first silver piece of silverware for 2004, or will it be the Pirates taking home the bounty today as they go for double-doubles here at Wimborne Road? this afternoon. It's a packed house here at Wimborne, as always here, the home of the Pirates. And uh, it's some cracking action. And uh, earlier, Nigel Leahy spoke to some of the riders. Yeah, that's true, because, uh, you know, they are six points up and uh, we have a little bit more to work on now. We, we know the home track and uh, the riders normally go well around here. So, um, yeah, it's better to be here the second leg. It's tough at the end of the season, of course, because you know riders are starting to wind down now, and you're not getting the regular matches in. Is it okay to come back here now and, and get back into what is one of the most important matches of the season again? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can only answer my, from myself that you know there is probably different riders have the different feeling about that because uh, some riders like to to keep riding every day, and some other riders like to have a few days between. So. But I think all team is up for it. You know, we want to win this now, so hopefully it work out well for us. OK, good luck tonight. Thanks a lot. Neil, I guess everybody is pleased then that this second leg now is going to take place here at Poole. And of course, I'm sure no one would be more pleased than you to see them lift the trophy today. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've got a great day, haven't we? I mean, after all the terrible weather we've been having, and uh, it just worked out nice that uh, we end up at Poole. Just hope we can uh, be lifting the trophy in a couple of hours' time. I have to say that we didn't get a chance to speak to you after the Elite League Championship and uh, I didn't see any tears, there were lots of tears from Magnus, but uh, this time round it seemed to be almost like, like it was coming home or for a long time. Yeah, I think, you know, all my emotion was pent up over many, many years to last season when we won the trip, uh, the treble. And, and the show, I was emotional, obviously, but I say I think people have seen me crying up on television yeah. so, and uh, cameras. So, um, yeah, I was very, very pleased and, and uh, just not quite as emotional as Magnus, shall we say. <laughs> Back on to today, I know you've just had a chat with the guys. What sort of things are you telling them in, in there in the changing rooms? Yeah, well, basically, I mean, we've got a, we've got a six point deficit, which we've got to get back. And uh, what I want to try and do is get it back as quick as possible and force um, Ipswich into using Hans and Scotty early on for the tactical rise. And then we've got to basically try and stop them getting an 8 1 in that particular heat. Okay, if Hans or Scott, if it is them, get away. It's just to peg back and, and, and maybe 6 3 and just, lim you know, damage limitation, really. It's good to know because obviously the problem is that you've got to get that eight points really ahead and that immediately opens up that tactical so you're ready and prepared for it. That's right, yeah, I, I want to get it out over and done with straight away you know, as soon as possible because you know I don't want it to happen until like heat 13, heat 14, heat, you know, because then it could be very costly and you know, they could get right back at us there and that, that's what I don't want to happen. I want to get it back on level ground and then, then we'll take it from there. We'll be watching with interest. Good luck to everyone. Thanks a lot. Well, Ipswich actually start with much the same team that they had a week ago, except with the exception of this man, Dave Watt. Dave, uh, strangely enough, uh, being a Pirates asset, you've come to uh, face the Pirates in opposition today. Yeah, it's just a, a weird chain of events that, that led me to be here today. It was, uh, it was something that just sort of came out of the blue. I'm, I'm not here to have anything against Pool or anything like that, or the promoters or anything, you know. I'm just here to ride my bike and... Uh, you know, earn some money and do my job. Absolutely. It hasn't been the best season for you here at Pool. This might be an opportunity for you to show the fans or the Pool people, even though they may not like it, what you can do. Yeah, well, I, I hope so. You know, I, I, I go out in every race wanting to win it, and uh, that's what I'll be doing today as well. Um, you know, I hope they see it as nothing to do, you know, with, uh, you know, have anything to do with Pool itself. It's just I'm here to ride my bike and... Uh, and do you know do a job? And that's all I can you know really do. I don't uh, you know this this situation between Pool and, and Ipswich has nothing to do with me. I'm just here to uh, to fill in a position and and uh, you know I don't I don't want to cause any trouble or anything like that. It's just um, strange how how you know one uh, one meeting can cause uh, quite a bit of aggravation. But I don't want to I don't want to do anything wrong. I just uh, I just want to ride. I'm sure we're all looking forward to seeing great speedway today. Thanks. Thank you. 
Well, Ipswich and Wolverhampton both made very bold statements uh, a few weeks ago that whoever won the Elite League playoff semi-final could win the Elite League final. Well, it, uh, Wolverhampton came and left empty-handed. Ipswich now have their opportunity to show the Pirates whether or not that could have taken place in the Elite League. And I know that the Pirates fans are absolutely desperate to make sure that the uh, trophy stays here and pool go for a historic double-double, a double, ch uh, double opportunity to win both league and cup. It hasn't been done for 20 years almost when Oxford did it in 1985 and 1986. Right, well, the uh, Ipswich bikes then are coming back into the pits and uh, we can't obviously establish this race at uh, this uh, time why they're coming back into the uh, pits, but uh, so it looks like a, a fairly significant development in the proceedings. Does that mean Ipswich are not participating in this afternoon? Well, stay tuned. Well, that's Davey Watt there. He's as riding for number two for the Witches here this afternoon. He's the chap that all the uh, delay and all the fuss is about. Paul alleging that he's uh, ineligible to ride for the Witches this afternoon. Mike Smiley and John Louis categorically uh, stating that under the regulations he is able to uh, field out for the winches this afternoon. So the meeting goes ahead. One time there we were getting a bit worried with all the bikes coming back to the pits that we were back to Suffolk without seeing a wheel turn. But the meeting goes ahead. We've asked Mike Smiley and for John Lewis comments on camera but apparently they've been asked uh, publicly not to speak to the media and that does include us at rerun uh, videos uh, unfortunately. So uh, an embargo on the management side of things but just to say that the pool riders, the pool management are riding under protest and uh, that's where we're going. So the bikes are warming up, they'll be back out on parade at the moment, so let's cross over now to Clive Fisher. battle on the track is half as exciting as the pre-match battle in the pits to determine exactly how the uh, teams would line up for this one. Well, we're in for a great afternoon. Sun shining then, uh, putting a uh, uh, complete uh, block on anybody's pre-match predictions that the weather might be the deciding factor in uh, who wins the cup. Let's hope it's cleanly decided on the aggregate scores today, remembering that Paul are six in arrears as we start off. But of course... Uh, if the uh, controversy over the inclusion of Davy Watt 
in the Ipswich Bridges lineup is not resolved. It could be, in fact, the destination of the Cup decided uh, outside this meeting. Bjarne Pedersen in red, Christoph Kasbach in blue, Hans Andersen in yellow, and sorry, in green, and in yellow, it's maybe what? Hans Andersen, with the favoured inside, gets away at uh, the start of heat one and completes the first lap ahead of Christoph Kasperzak, Bjorn Pedersen and Davey Watt. Christoph Kasperzak hot on the tail of Hans Andersen and uh, it looks as if the uh, six point margin between the two teams is going to remain after this one although Christoph Kasperzak was a from the back winner against Lee Adams in a previous round of the Gold Cup here and uh, it could be that he's looking to make himself an early hero. But with a lap to go, I don't think Hans Andersen, with his experience, his reputation, and not the least his pool track uh, expertise, is going to take the opening race, and we're going to have a 3-3 start. So, in the glorious Wimborne Road sunshine on this Halloween day here at Wimborne Road, we've got a drawn race to start. Hans Andersen seems to be quite chuffed with that. But off gate one, I think anything else might have been a little bit of a surprise. So it's Hans Andersen from Christoph Kasperzak and Bjarne Pedersen. So can the uh, deadlock be broken in race two? And we've got the uh, respective reserves. Uh, Daniel Davidson in the red helmet going from grid one. We've got uh, Danny King, the youngster from Ipswich, who's made such an impact on the uh, junior racing scene this season. He's uh, in the green helmet going from grid two, very fast starter. And... Uh, Magnus Sellestrum, the skipper, on uh, grid three in the blue helmet. And Kim Janssen, the uh, Swedish youngster, going from grid four. So 3-3 three, three opening race. Tensions already mounting purely because of the fact that this is second leg of the final, but increased significantly with all those pre-match shenanigans. Away they go, and it's the racing that really matters. Good start by... Daniel Davidson, and uh, well, having dropped his gate from uh, three, Magnus Sederstrom there doing a cutback and using his inside line uh, speed to come through and join Daniel. So, rather thought at the start of the proceedings that it was the tail end of the Ipswich switches uh, that would uh, be the suspect, the potential weak link. And so it is looking here, because uh, certainly in the early heat, they're struggling to find uh, a line and any speed around the track. Magnus Edestrom there drifting a little bit wide, allowing Kim Janssen to take closer order with a lap to go. But uh, although Magnus doesn't seem to have a vast amount of speed, he's using his track knowledge to sit in behind Daniel Davison. Daniel just getting out of shape going into the corner there. But... The fans are going to be on their feet because there's the deficit cut right back from six points to two, albeit that Kim Janssen made a superhuman effort on the run in to the checker flag to uh, get up for two points, but he failed just by half, half a bike length from what I could see, which means that the Pirates have reduced the deficit to just two points. It's a win for Daniel Davidson. Second Magnus Zedestrom. Third was Kim Janssen and the scoreline now, eight to the Pirates, four to the Witches. And here he goes. Do you want the dance? Come on, do you want the dance? There we go. This is the team of uh, Zaro, who is a great rider against the Pirates. So the fall of the fish was on the heat two kind of sponsored by Four Toys of Dotcom. So what's going to happen in heat three? It's a battle of the pairings in the middle order and this could be crucial to the outcome of the match and I don't think the form guide was wrong with regard to the reserves but of course the three and four pairing is crucial for the witches on one and three. We've got Jesper Jensen, he's in the red helmet and Chris Louie uh, at the comeback king this season, he's in the blue helmet on grid three. We've got Antonio Limbach for the Pirates in blue uh, on grid two, and uh, Matty Furian in red from grid four. Well, the strength uh, of this pool pairing in recent uh, couple of months has been their outstanding gating prowess, plus, of course, Antonio Limbach with his never-say-die tactics uh, from the back. But will it be from the start? Will it be from the back? Will the witches consolidate? We're about to find out. Oh, dearie, dearie me, and it looks as if uh, the nerves have got to Antonio Limbach because if I'm not very much mistaken, he's going to be 
uh, getting his marching orders from Heat 3 there, having uh, caught the tapes and uh, yet to uh, get the verdict on that one, but it looks grim for Antonio. Well, referee Chris Durno had a much closer look at uh, the riders than we did from our commentary position, and what he saw was different from what we saw from a distance, because Jesper Jensen was judged to have been the first rider to move and caused that uh, problem at the start of Heat 3, and it's he that's got, not if his marching orders, but certainly he uh, has to go in reverse and uh, go off the back mark. He's off a handicap position, which means the riders have to shuffle grid positions. And uh, although it looked as if uh, Antonio Limbach was the uh, rider that jumped, in fact, it was Jesper's move that caused that to happen. So Antonio now goes from grid one. We've got Chris Louis on grid two, Matty Furian on grid three, and Jesper the Enten off the back mark. And that's how they're lining up for the restart of heat three, and away they go. And that's a good start from Matty Furian and Antonio Limbach. Very much business as usual on the first bend from that bearing. And Chris Louis uh, not able to mount a serious challenge as the Pirates set themselves up with a lap gone for another race win, which after just three heats would indeed mean that they are ahead on aggregate, albeit by a slender two points. Half the race gone then, Matty Furian looking sharp as usual, out in front, plenty of speed. Antonio Limbach. Speedway's most exciting rider as uh, presented prior to the start of racing and he doesn't need to be exciting in this one just very very steady as he sits behind his team partner Matty Furian these two looking comfortable on this autumn and well soaked and packed down uh, racing track here no dust today and uh, in the glorious afternoon sunshine what a great sight that is for the locals the Ipswich not really putting up much of a fight that time, particularly with Jesper Jensen at the back, but I have a feeling that it wouldn't have made an awful lot of difference. We'll never know, but nevertheless, that's three points to Matty Furia and two to Antonio, five to the Pirates, who now lead by 13 points to five and by 55 points to 53 on aggregate. On to Heat 4 then, we already know uh, quite clearly what Hans Anderson's capable of doing around this track and we're about to find out if Scott Nichols can match him because uh, those are the, uh, that's the twin spearhead of the visiting lineup, which we know will uh, pose a severe challenge to Paul, particularly if we go down to heats 13 and 15 for a decider to this competition. So it's what the other five riders can do and whether they can score points to back the two big guns. In this one then, Scotty Nichols in the green helmet is going from grid three. His Swedish partner, Kim Janssen, is in the yellow helmet on grid one. We've got Magnus Zellerström in grid two and Ryan Sullivan going from the wide outside in grid four. Brian, of course, in the red helmet. That's how they line up for heat four. And what can Ryan do against Scott Nichols? What can uh, Magnus do against the young Swede, Kim Janssen? Away they go, and that's a good start from Janssen. A very good one from Sullivan. And it's Scotty Nichols recovering from a poor start there. But Magnus Zedestrom there nips up the inside and takes Scott Nichols completely by surprise. Scotty coming back underneath, coming up the back straight and takes Magnus back. Ryan Sullivan out in front. I'd be surprised if anyone got anywhere near him, although Kim Janssen obviously trying his darndest. Scott Nichols at the moment looks as if he's out there to sit for a tactical third place, having uh, repassed Magnus and uh, take the team riding option. So could very well be a drawn race here. Ryan Sullivan uh, looking in uh, impressive form, a really good start from grid four. That'll please him, and with a lap to go, Ryan Sullivan looking extremely comfortable out in front. Scott Nichols in third place, looking at his partner and sitting on the line, and uh, Magnus Sederstrom a little bit uh, lacking in uh, speed. Uh, he's right at the back there, but the Pirates share it, which means that they maintain their eight-point lead on the day and their two-point lead in aggregate. So it's 16 points to eight for the match and 58 to 56 aggregate. Here we are then, back in the pits. That was uh, Heat 4, Ryan Sullivan, a uh, convincing winner there. Uh, we'll try and grab a few words now with the winner of Heat number 2, Daniel Davidson.
Yeah, quick word with uh, Daniel here. Um, winner of heat number two. Looked quite a good win for heat two. What are the conditions like today? It's pretty good considering all the rain that they had down here. So it's a fair track to race for everyone. The uh, unsettled uh, start obviously unnerving the riders a little bit with the uh, uh, dispute with the management of Ipswich over the inclusion of Davy Watt. Has that affected you at all? No, yes. When they call us back, we just sit down and relax and let them sort it. It's not my problem. Oh, indeed, but it's, uh, it's a, a big afternoon for Paul looking to add another cup to the uh, Elite League Championship and be double-double winners, so uh, it's a big afternoon for everybody. Uh, of course, it would be lovely to win this uh, Noka Cup as well, but if it is a good team and they're going to prove good effort against us today, I reckon. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank no you. No problem. Five minutes, uh, the controversial Ipswich pairing of Hans Anderson and Davy Watt. Hans because he's Hans and Davy because he's uh, got an Ipswich race jacket on. So, uh, what can the 5-1 pairing of Matty Furyan and Antonio Limbach uh, do this time? Matty's on grid one, Davy Watt grid two, Antonio grid three, and Hans grid four. And I do believe, although Pirate Videos didn't make the trip to Ipswich, by all accounts, Hans Anderson was not entirely pleased about Antonio's first bend riding line in... Uh, one of the races later on in the proceedings of that match. In fact, I think it was the only time that night that Hans significantly dropped points. Uh, looking at the score chart, he uh, actually finished last in that one. So will there be any uh, paybacks this time? We're about to find out. Up go the tapes and away they go. Good start by Matthew Spurry and Hans Anderson. Smart from his grid, but uh, not smart enough to stop Antonio Limbach, making him look a little bit of a dummy there. Great first spend by Antonio there, and Hans Anderson now trying to move up his inside, but uh, Antonio not giving ground. That was a very interesting straight there. It looks as if Hans wanted to take a line up the inside, but Antonio, his riding line said, no, I'm not going to have that. And at the moment, Antonio looking very confident. Matty out in front, Antonio in second place, and Hans Anderson trying the inside line that time but didn't seem to make ground on Antonio and at the moment it's the Pirates on for a 5-1. Well this is all important because it's riders like Hans Anderson that Ipswich are d relying upon so much to give them uh, uh, any chance of a, a say in the cup but it doesn't look if it's going to happen and on the final run in the Pirates have done it. They've had a 5-1 already from this pairing but that one is far more significant because it was against the uh, potential Ipswich top scorer and number one, Hans Anderson. So what a great maximum that was for Paul, a vital race result, and it moves the Pirates on to 21 and the Whips, Ipswich Witches on to nine. So now the Pirates firmly in the driving seat, six points ahead on aggregate. What a great race that was for the Pirates and the fans here at Wimborne Road standing up in the afternoon sunshine to give them their deserved applause. Great speedway. Antonio Limbat then has just uh, captured his breath after a scintillating heat number five. Another maximum for the Pirates and uh, you kept Hans Anderson at bay so he must be delighted with that. Yeah, that was fun. He's a really good uh, rider and he's very quick, special around here. So. That is always fun to have him behind it. Uh, <laughs> myself. Um, so that puts the, the Pirates in a very strong position now, going six up on aggregate. Uh, we've just heard the Witches are putting Scotty Nichols in tactically, so they're not rolling over just yet. No, that is this meeting is not over yet, and uh, there come to be many hard races, and so we come. We need to do our best and uh, keep going, and we'll see if we can take this one. The uh, heat number heat number three uh, caused a bit of controversy because many thought it was you that actually did the tapes infringement. What did you feel about the situation? <laughs> I thought it was me also. <laughs> no, there was. Uh, I saw him just go away and stop, and then I dropped my clutch. So I don't know. There was. You can see it from uh, from two different ways, but I was like, I didn't was excluded. But you didn't ring the referee up and say, no, it wasn't me. It was no. me. It wasn't yes, but <laughs> No, not that honest no. today. <laughs> Alright, thank you Antonio. Okay, now on to race number six and Mike Smiley uh, forced into action here with the first tactical ride of the day and surprise, surprise, Scotty Nichols on grid one. The inside advantage, he's out in the black and white helmet, tactical ride, any points he scores will be doubled and uh, his partner on grid three is uh, Daniel King in the yellow helmet. For the Pirates, Christoph Kasmazak goes from grid two in blue Bjarna Pedersen in red from grid four. Bjarna hoping to match Brian Sullivan's early uh, grid four. 
when he was out against Scott Nichols. Let's see what he can do this time. Of course, uh, this is uh, following Neil Middleditch's pre-match uh, forecast of uh, drawing the sting of the Ipswich uh, tactical ride as early as possible. That's a good ride from Bjorn Pedersen and uh, he's taken a little bit wide by uh, Scott Nichols. Uh, Christoph Kasselzak on the inside and the two pirates there making a challenge on Scott Nichols. Scotty out in front so we could be looking at a 6-3 here if Scotty can hold on to this which would narrow the aggregate scores to just three points. Scotty Nichols then on for double points this time and looking pretty comfortable out in front. The two pirates packing in behind and of course Neil Milovich will not be entirely unhappy because if they can get the two tactical ride races out of the way it means that the uh, witches won't have anything to fall back on later in the proceedings. But Scott Nichols, after a rather indifferent start in his opening race in Heat 4, has got the measure of the track now. He's obviously sorted out his setup and he's hoping he's not going to have any more disasters like the one at Ipswich, which saw him have an engine failure whilst winning in Heat 7. It didn't happen this time. He took the race comfortably. First, uh, first bit of racing to give the witches supporters here, of whom there are quite a substantial numbers. First time they've got something to cheer about as the uh, pirates take three points and they're on to 24. The witches take six points and uh, they're on to 15. 24 15 on the day and it's 66 63 on aggregate. Right, Chris Lou just uh, being uh, pushed off there and ready for uh, heat number seven, another vital win, uh, another vital heat for the Witches indeed. But uh, that double point score from uh, Scott Nichols really uh, putting them back into uh, contention here. As I get caught up on somebody's bike, <laughs> Scott Nichols joins us. Uh, fine heat win, tactical ride, sort of restores a little bit to the Witches camp. Yeah, he's uh, trying to pull it back, you know, we've had a bit of a funny start to the day and a bit unlucky with the uh, decision earlier with the S5. Hard to see from here, but I mean, uh, I don't really think he hit it. No one else well, seems to think we've just interviewed Antonio Lim back and he admitted as much that he thought he was the guilty man. Well, there you go, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's done now. I mean, we've still got, still got a fair few races left yet to pull something back, so um, see what we can do. There seems to be quite a lot on the track today as regards sort of top surface, so uh, maybe we can use that. Yeah, I mean, the dirt is out really wide, you know, if uh, mid-track and on the inside is pretty much nothing, you know, um, so you kind of got to try and work out where you want to set your bike up for the inside or the outside, and um, so it's difficult, you know, but this time of year everything's getting cold, the track's getting a bit greasy, so it's difficult really for them to do a good track and for us to ride it, so uh, you know, that's the way it is, and we've just got to keep digging deep and do what we can. And starts, of course, always imperative, so if you can make a good start, you're halfway there. Yeah, I mean, the starts, is a lot of dirt on the starts, but there's not loads of grip, you know, it's a bit deceiving. So, uh, obviously, that's what they're used to, and they know what to expect. So, home track advantage, so I think they call it. So, see if we can turn them over. OK, thanks for that. Cheers. So, Pirates still nine points to the good on the day, and therefore, which is potentially still able to use tactical rides, but electing not to this time. I'm sure Hans Anderson is uh, in Mike Smiley's mind, but um, Hans not out again till Heat 11. He might uh, need to act before then, but at the moment uh, he's resisting any temptation in this one, which may be just as well because we've got Ryan Sullivan, and it's very much a question of flying Ryan Sullivan form today, judging by his Heat 4 victory. Ryan this time has the added advantage of Grid 1 in the red helmet. His partner Daniel Davidson then in the blue helmet goes from Grid 2. Uh, Jesper Jensen up on the uh, tapes this time, not uh, back on the handicap position. And uh, let's hope he can keep it that way. Chris Louie going through his uh, pre-race uh, ritual is now ready for the start. And away they go. Ryan Sullivan gets a pretty good start there and just holds off the first bench challenge from Jesper Jensen. Chris Louie just cutting over on Daniel Davidson, shutting out the Swedish youngster for Paul. So it looks as if the uh, Witches game plan this time is to shut off uh, and sit for a 3-3 drawn race. Ryan Sullivan comfortably out in front. Daniel Davidson there uh, some way back not getting his customary uh, sharp start that time, which is a bit of disappointment for him, but it, uh, things stand at the moment. The Pirates are going to maintain their nine-point aggregate lead. Jesper Jensen and Chris Louie riding outer and inner lines respectively, and the classic bit of team riding with uh, a lap to go then. 
not an awful lot of track action this time to enthuse you about, other than for the Pirates fans, it's their uh, number five rider who looks in glorious form. Looking like a comfortable win then for Ryan Sullivan as he comes up to cross the line for heat seven, well ahead of the Ittridge pairing who are packing in for the minor positions. Jesper Jensen second, Chris Lee was third. They'll be settling for the drawn race ahead of Daniel Davidson and it moves the scoreline on to the Pirates 27, Ipswich which is 18. And as we line up for race number eight, that uh, fine win in heat seven from Brian Sullivan, put the Pirates uh, into the lead by 27 points to 18, so nine between them as we go into this crucial halfway stage race. And no heat leaders in this one. And uh, it's second uh, order riders. Magnus Edestrom for Paul, their skipper in blue, goes from grid one. He had an uh, indifferent sort of day so far, but uh, he'll be trying his damnedest this time. He's got Kim Janssen. Young Swedes alongside him in the yellow helmet on grid two. We've got Christoph Kasavzak in the red helmet going from three. And it's Davy Watt completing the race. The uh, rider who started in the pool lineup at the beginning of the season. He's in the green helmet on grid four. Away they go. Bit of an untidy start there. A bit ragged. And Christoph Kasavzak gets a good start. Magnus Sederstrom, not such a good one. But uh, Magnus coming through tight on the line. And uh, in fact, it's Kim Janssen who goes out in front there and Magnus Sederstrom coming through on the inside there in quite a defiant fashion and Christoph Kasper looking to do the same thing and indeed does and the uh, young Swede for Ipswich in yellow a little bit out of shape coming out of the pick's turn there but he's fighting back strongly but what a great uh, and a very determined move that was by the Pirate Skipper there we don't really see Magnus uh, indulging in uh, forceful racing uh, although maybe um, Lee Adams occasionally might disagree, but really and truly, Magnus is a gentleman on the track as well as off it, but that time he said it's time for a bit of decisive action, and he was through. Kim Janssen still having a go at Christoph Kasselzak, taking it in line, but the young pole for Paul there, shutting the door, saying, I'm sorry, you're not doing that to me today. I want this race, and if I won, it is a crucial race. Davey Watt disappointingly, disappointingly trailing off at the back there, but a great... 5-1 from the pairing of Christoph Kasperzak and Magnus Sederstrom there to give the Pirates a 13-point lead. 32 points to 19, the scoreline. And, of course, it means that the Pirates now are seven points ahead on aggregate and the grandstand once again brought to its feet by a lively race there. And I think we're going to have a bit of double disco because we've got Christoph Kasperzak and... Uh, we've got synchronised dancing. They were synchronising the team riding on the track, synchronising the celebrations afterwards. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Last match of the season, but the celebrations uh, have started already. They're starting to warm up. There's still plenty of crucial heats to go in this cup match. But as far as Zorro's concerned, it's uh, looking good at this stage of the proceedings. Great right, racing. Right, so jubilation then in the pits here after uh, that heat number eight with us, uh, winner Magnus Zetterstrom. Certainly uh, held off a determined Kim Janssen for another vital Pirates maximum. Yeah, that's right. I mean, every heat is tough and we really need this to keep going, you know, because uh, we know Ipswich is a t tough team, so we just need to keep the spirit up and try to score as many points as we can. Ipswich have already used one tactical ride, of course, to good effect with Scott Nichols. They've still got those to play if uh, they need to. Yeah, that's right, but uh, I wish I could say bring them on, but, you know, uh, <laughs> it's too early, really, but uh, we're up for it. We want to win this. The, and that, that 5 1 from yourself and uh, uh, Christoph, Christoph, that puts you seven points up on aggregate, so yeah, we're that's at right. the halfway stage now. Yeah, that's what we wanted, you know, as early as we could get those uh, Joker in, it's better it is for us, you know. Because we don't want to have them late in the meeting, just before the the, the last few heats. So, yeah, hopefully it's going to work all the way through. All right, well, we might uh, very well have a word with you uh, later on. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. And the Pirates maintain the initiative. Uh, it's their devastating 5-1 uh, pairing of uh, Matty Furrier and Antonio Limbach. Antonio on grid one in blue, and Matty goes from grid three in the red helmet but this time can they take the scalp of Scott Nichols who goes from grid two in green and of course young Daniel Kin King goes from grid four well it certainly would be a feather in the cap of this pairing if they could include Scott Nichols they've really got Hans Anderson uh, uh, under their belts for the day that's uh, one big scalp and of course they have got uh, grids one and three to help them but of course uh, we know that Scott even if he doesn't make the start he uh, 
represents probably Ipswich's best prospect of uh, an overtake. I remember the uh, Elite League B fixture here. He was in devastating form. What can he do this time? Up go the tapes away. They go Antonio Limbach lists slightly into the bend. And Scott Nichols takes the pass to a wider outside line, but just gets momentarily out of tape shape. And that's all it needed for Matthew Furian and Antonio to whip through. Although it looks as if Scott is... Uh, going to come through to relegate uh, Matthew Furian back to third. Antonio, though, still on the outside ahead of Scotty Nichols. Antonio moving to the uh, inside line to shut off the uh, challenge from Scotty Nichols. So at the moment, the park's holding a 4-2. Antonio Limbach riding a tight line. Matthew Furian seems to have settled for third place. There's a lot of traffic out in front, a lot of activity. I think I'm going to sit here mid-track and see what happens. A safe third place would be good for the Pirates at this stage, but Antonio Limbach is providing the heroics, probably too much to expect that this pairing would have maintained their run of five ones, but a 4-2 this time as they come around the final ten is very, very satisfactory result indeed. Antonio Limbach builds further upon his growing reputation. A great win there. Scott Nichols acknowledging there with that hand signal that he was beaten by the faster rider. Matty Furian in third place uh, moves the scoreline in this uh, knockout cup final second leg to the Paul Rias Pirates, 36 points. Ipswich, which is 21, and on aggregate, 78 to the Pirates, 69 to the Witches. So the Pirates currently looking pretty good for the double-double, but we don't want to put a curse on them, or we just certainly don't want the Witches to put a curse on them. So in Heat 10, we've got Christoph Kasavizak riding from Grid 1. Alongside him, we've got Chris Louie on Grid 2 in yellow. Bjorn Pedersen goes from Grid 3, and Jesper Jensen on Grid 4 in the green helmet. So remember, it's 36-21 the lead on the day by the Pirates. And, uh, of course, I think that if the Witches are going to do anything in this final, this pairing in this race must do something. And uh, it's quite a big ask because the Pirates have got one and three. And uh, Bjarne Pennison and Christoph Kasperdak have been pretty useful form, although neither rider has yet won a race. So maybe there's a little bit of hope there for the Witches. And I think this is, if the Witches can get something, it could just spark a revival. If they can't get a heat win here, I think the Pirates are almost home and dry. Away they go. Good start from Christoph Kasmazak and a pretty good one from Bjarne Pedersen. And it looks as if they're leaving the Witches. Bjarne Pedersen just covering the inside line there. And uh, Kasmazak on the outside, they're struggling a little bit. But uh, Bjarne Pedersen out in front and it looks as if it's going to be the Pirates heading ever closer to top victory as Christoph Kasperzat gets a very, very out of shape turn that time, drifting wider and wider and not looking at all comfortable. And I think he'll uh, be well advised to keep to the inside this time, which indeed he does. Safety fence far closer than it needed to be. Bjarne Patterson comfortably out in front. It doesn't look as if anyone's going to get anywhere near him, possibly with the exception of Christoph Kasperzat. Chris Louie in third place and uh, Jesper Jensen trailing off the back. So this middle order pairing for the Witches not delivering today and the Pirates capitalising with half a lap to go in Heat 10. They're going to be almost out of sight. They're going to be 13 points ahead on aggregate and they're going to be no less than 19 ahead on the day. Don't know where my maths are right there, but certainly the Pirates well in front after Heat 10 and a great win from Bjarne Pedersen. Yeah, Neil Middleditch there, uh, the uh, Pirates team manager, just uh, congratulating uh, Bjarne Pedersen and uh, discussing uh, a very vital heat 10, of course, another maximum uh, heat advantage to the Pirates. And uh, we'll just see if we can grab a very quick word with uh, Bjarne. No? Right, later on we'll grab a very quick word with Bjarne Pedersen, still fully focused, of course, on the action. Heat 11 then, the scoreline 41-22 on the day an absolutely uh, superb performance so far by the pirates can they keep it rolling in heat 11 where we've got uh, kim jansen coming in to take the disappointing the place of disappointing davy watt for the witches kim jansen on grid one his partner hans anderson in green goes on grid three i think he's in green i can't see a black and white helmet very difficult to tell from here we'll have a look as he comes by on turn one haven't heard any tactical ride announcement, but you never know. Mike Smiley might have made one last desperate move. It does, in fact, look as if it is a quartered helmet. 
the opposition for the Pirates, Brian Sullivan in red, Daniel Davidson on grid four in blue. Away they go, good start from Hans Anderson, and uh, looks as if the Pirates here might once again set on as Daniel Davidson uh, rears up the back straight in second place. Hans Anderson out in front, Brian Sullivan settling on the line for a spot of team riding. In fact, it looks very much as if Hans Anderson is having a tactical ride this time and he was pretty sharply away from the tape. So in fact, the Ipswich switches are currently holding a 6-3 advantage, which would make the scoreline 86-76. It would make the scoreline, uh, give the scoreline a 10-point margin with uh, only four races remaining. But uh, that time, unfortunately, we saw Daniel Davison having a, a little bit of engine trouble, so for the first time it was getting a little bit of luck this time. As, uh, Hans Anderson out in front, Kim Janssen uh, in third place, and the uh, witches are going to take um, a heat victory by seven points to two in that one. Daniel Davison suffering engine failure when handily placed uh, for second place. To all and sundry down here at Woodbourne Road, so obviously communications. So, uh, last minute communications there regarding the tactical ride, but we'll get confirmation that that was the case. It certainly looks as if it was. So, looking at what that does to the uh, score chart, means that the Pirates move on to 43, and the Witches with the. Uh, seven points there, six from Hans, one from Kim Janssen, on to 29. So 77 to the Witches and 85 to the, the Pirates. So in fact, the aggregate margin is eight points to the Pirates' advantage with four races remaining. So it's still doable for the Witches. So Heat 12 now lines up with the reserve change. Kim Janssen taking the place of Daniel King. No uh, surprise that, because Daniel King, three rides completed, uh, yet to score a point, whereas Kim Janssen, from his four ratings, has at least mustered five so far. So he comes in in the yellow helmet on uh, grid number one. Alongside him on two is Paul's uh, Matty Furyan in red, and uh, he'll be a great hope this time. We've got Jesper Jensen, he's just had one second place and two last so far to his credit and he's on grid three in green and his contribution this time pivotal to any lingering chances that the witches have got of making a comeback in this match. And finally for the Pirates, uh, fresh from his wonderful victory in Heat 8, can he do the same this time at Magnus Sedestrom? If he can, then I think the Pirates are back uh, well and truly on the road to victory but they faltered a little bit in heat 11 with that 7-2 heat win which makes the aggregate score 85-77 in favour of the Pirates it's four more races they're going to be crucial what's going to happen here in heat 12 and it's a good start by Matty Furian just what the Pirates wanted and Magnus Sennestrup gets an absolutely scorching gate from grid 2 and comes around Janssen and Jensen and uh, Gaspar Jensen looking as if he's trying to make a challenge back, but Magnus Zillison shuts the door up the straight because I think Zorro thinks that a 5-1 in this one will put the Pirates firmly in the driving seat with three races to go because it will mean that they will stretch their aggregate lead to 12 points. So Matty Furian comfortably out in front, half the race gone, Magnus Zellerstrom in second place, the Witches are trailing with Kim Janssen in third place, battling bravely. Jesper Janssen, not a quarter of the rider he was at the start of the season when he was in absolutely scintillating form, but he's just said, gone backwards as the season's progressed. Uh, the Pirates won't be complaining about that, the Witches may be, but on the final run in now, just what the Pirates wanted after the interval, a maximum 5-1, Matty Furian takes it, Magnus Sedestrom in second place. Look at Magnus. He's well and truly pumped. 5-1 makes it 48 to the Pirates and 30 to the Ipswich Witches. But more importantly, 90 now to the Pirates and 78 to the Witches. So 12 points up, three races remaining. The, the Witches would need to get a 5-1 in each of the last three races to just draw the proceedings. Well... It's still mathematically possible for the Pirates to do something, but I wouldn't put money on the Witches going away with anything other than the runners-up trophies today. We'll have to see. Neil Middleditch there just coming in to congratulate Matteo Furian.
another big 5-1 to the uh, Pirates and it really sort of sets them up now firmly in the driving seat and uh, he's looking a bit happier so we will approach him now now uh, that uh, the hard work is done for you Matt a tremendous afternoon three heat wins you must be delighted with your own performance yeah you know all the team is good around here and we we are quite happy you know we get some points and... well and I did all the job in that heat you know I was <laughs> closing the door for everyone and just let, let Matty go, you know. Right? That's why I had the best time today, because he stopped yeah. everybody. Yeah. Oh, so without, without Magnus, you're nothing, is that what you're saying? He has me to, to win, you know. <laughs> Magnus is was taking some of the credit there, but that really puts the Pirates firmly in the driving seat. Three heats to go, uh, which is a sort of almost, almost over. Yeah, you know, it's always, if you have a good team racing, nobody can pass, you know. And me and Magnus are really good, you know, we... We look for each other, you know, with Magnus, and always we score nearly 5-1. Because if you look for each other, nobody can pass you, and, I mean, of course we are happy, yeah. OK, thanks very much. Matteo Fair, yeah, So, after Heat 13, the Pirates holding a 12-point aggregate lead, and it's quite simple. If they can split the witches in this one, if they take anything out of this one, then the Pirates are the KO Cup champions, they're the double-double champions. We've got Bjorn Pedersen, Ryan Sullivan, Hans Anderson and Scotty Nichols, away they go. And that's a great start there for the uh, Ipswich number one, Hans Anderson. But an even better one from Ryan Sullivan, who blasts around the outside. Scotty Nichols sets off in pursuit. Barn Pedersen trailing at the back there. But Ryan Sullivan there caught everybody by surprise. And he blasts away. And Bjarne Pedersen there challenging Scotty Nichols at the back. This is a big, big race. If Ryan Sullivan can hold this advantage, he will have ridden the Pirates into the double-double uh, record books. It's Ryan Sullivan from Hans Anderson. Hans Anderson looking behind him. He doesn't look confident at mounting a serious challenge on Ryan Sullivan and with a lap to go. Ryan Sullivan is surely going to clinch it for the Pirates. It's Hans Anderson in second. Scotty Nichols third. Bjarne Pedersen at the back. Pirates fans won't mind that because this win gives the knockout cup for 2004 to the Paul Rias Pirates. Great ride from Ryan Sullivan. That will surely earn him the bumps. I hope I'm not being premature, but that was a great race. And the scoreline then, 51 to the Pirates, 33 to the Witches. It's 93 overall to the Pirates. 81, 12 up with two races to go. That looks pretty commanding to me. The uh, reception committee starting to gather at the pits gate. And the Pirates there now. Hail the double double champions 2003 league and cup 2004 league and cup right well that's it then that's heat 13 done and dusted and with that heat win from ryan sullivan that means that uh, there's no way back now for the evening star witches and that's the uh, knockout cup in the bag for the uh Paul rias pirates adding of course to their elite league championship a double double for the pirates and the jubilant scenes there as Ryan Sullivan gets the celebratory bump from his teammates and manager and Matt Ford, you can just see there, going over to congratulate Ryan Sullivan on that cup-winning ride. And let's uh, just see if we can grab a, a quick word with Ryan Sullivan. Ryan, you must be uh, in a rush to go off <laughs> and uh, be congratulated by his teammates. But... Uh, Right, quick word with the... Uh... Well, maybe we'll get them together. Are you still recording? Oh, we're still on. Right, Neil, and uh, that's a double-double for the Pool Pirates, uh, and it hasn't been done for many, many years. Yeah, I think it's over 40 years, in fact. I think it's a long, long time, so, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And uh, Ryan Sullivan there, I mean, there was some rumblings earlier in the week that he wasn't going to be here, but he's just clinched the cup for you, delighted. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's what it's been. I mean, Daniel Davidson as well, I mean, he was supposed to be in America, but he, he put off that trip to ride, and that shows the sort of commitment that the boys have got, and I think that's, you know, that's one of the reasons we're here, where we are, because the boys are so committed. So the weather we had last week has certainly uh, threatened to wash everything out. It's been a glorious oh, afternoon here down in I know. Well, that, that's right. That's England, isn't it? I mean, that's it. One day sunshine, next day rain. But say, beautiful today. 
uh, rather ironic that on Halloween you've actually uh, done the witches, but they're part of spirited performance. Absolutely, I, I think you know the crucial thing was that we, you know, we knew, and, and I wanted to to hit them hard earlier, so they had to use the tacticals earlier because I didn't want to be sort of you know eight points up towards the end. Then Mike would come in with the tacticals and get it right back. So it, it sort of went according to plan. L luckily, the boys were well, and he managed to you know get a lead to to, to force Mike into using using his tacticals. And of course, you're going to be right up there at the top of everybody's hit list in 2005. So you've got to defend it all again. Yeah, well, that's that's stuff we've been for the last couple of years. So another year's not going to worry me. All right, many congratulations. Thank then. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, Ryan's here. Ryan Sullivan, of course, at a, a cup-winning ride from you, and uh, say a, a, another solid all-round performance from the Pirates. A double-double for the for the team. Yeah, it's great. You know, it's a great team, great club. I've come in here halfway through and uh, thoroughly enjoyed myself, and uh, you know, we've won the double. So when you were here before in '97. Uh, you had a sort of year away from Peterborough. You didn't in enjoy the, the best of fortunes, but this certainly this year with this bunch of guys around you that sort of really seemed to settle you in and spurred you on. Yeah, for sure. You know, I uh, um, I was young then and I, I had a lot to learn and you know, a bit more experience now. And um, you know, these boys, they, they if you're having a bad meeting, uh, if someone has a bad meeting, someone else has a great meeting, and uh, that's just the way we've been working. And um, great team spirit, and I think that's what's won us everything. So do you think you'd recommend to every sort of leading rider to have a week off and have a nice holiday before a vital cup final? It'll certainly worked for you. Certainly, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. No last heat uh, decider in this event today, although that uh, would have been an attractive proposition for the neutral. All the home supporters don't want their nerves shredded. And in heat 14, Antonio Limbach can go out in a very relaxed fashion as he lines up with Daniel Davidson doing battle with Chris Louie and Kim Janssen for the Ipswich Witches. So uh, it's uh, Chris Louie on the uh, gate one and Daniel Davidson gate two. Janssen goes on three, and Antonio from grid four. And as you would imagine it, the Ipswich switches get out of the gate, and uh, Chris Louis out in front, Daniel Davidson uh, trailing at the back, but Antonio Limbach says, I don't care if we have won the cup, I've still got a point to prove, I've still got a race to win, and had it been required, this is exactly what I would have done under pressure. Absolutely superb bit of overtaking there on lap one, turn three, by uh, the young Swede and Antonio Limbach continuing to delight the Wimborne Road crowd as he has done throughout the season. One of the success stories for the Pirates in 2004 and a big reason why they have been so invincible in both the league and the KO Cup competition. So here comes Antonio. I don't know whether we're going to see him in heat 15 or not, but he's certainly... Uh, riding as if he's uh, making it very difficult to Neil, for Neil Middleditch not to select him. He takes the chequered flag. The penultimate race of the 2004 season. There goes Antonio. Chris Louie could only watch the youngster go by. And Kim Janssen in third place. Daniel Davidson uh, ending a, a wretched afternoon for him with more bike trouble. And so the scoreline with one race remaining, 54 to the Pirates, 36 to the Witches, and uh, just the nominated riders race to go. So heat 15, then we're down on the line uh, for the final race of the season, season 2004. It doesn't get much better than this. What follows the double-double? I can only think the triple-double. Well, more of that for next year, but here for the final race of the season, this race is significant for only that because the silverware today is only going in one direction, and that is to the all-conquering Paul Rias Pirates. So here in the nominated race heat 15, we've got Antonio Limbach nearest the camera in red. We've got uh, Hans Anderson alongside him in grid two. We've got Ryan Sullivan in blue, and Scotty Nichols in uh, yellow goes from grid four. So it's the pairing we thought would be out to do battle with the Pirates in the final race, but certainly not mounting the threat and the potential to uh, rob the Pirates of this famous double victory. This is purely for honour of a different description as we await the release of the tapes and away they go. Antonio Limbach gets a pretty good start. He's challenged strongly on the first bend by Hans Anderson, but nips through on the inside superbly there. And Scotty Nichols coming up to make an inside challenge. So this is a pretty tough race here. Ryan Sullivan seems to be stuck at the back. It's Antonio Limbach from Hans Anderson. It's Scotty Nichols doing the team riding bit on the inside. Ryan Sullivan stuck right at the back 
Antonio Limbach out in the dirt here and uh, half the race gone. He's looking comfortable here to maintain a fantastic afternoon. Maximum points for the Rias Pirates. And with a little over a lap to go, it doesn't look as if the two witches are going to mount any sort of a serious challenge on the young Swede. And here we are into the last lap now. Antonio Limbach, five races, paid for five wins, two behind his partner, three out in front, takes the chequered flag. Four fans will be hoping that this is not the last they see of this Swedish youngster, that this is just another chapter in the continuing success story that is Antonio Limbach. So the final race then, drawn, three to each side, 57-39 comprehensive victory for the Pirates in the second leg of the Knockout Cup and the final aggregate score 99-87 in favour of the Pirates and that brings the uh, racing curtain down on the 2004 season while Antonio he's just ever so slightly chuffed can't you tell and what better when you've had a double double to celebrate than a double lap of honour because here goes Antonio uh, He's happy. He's a happy bunny. And he takes... He, well, he's getting revved up for next season, I think. Zorro gives him a congratulatory pat there as he comes onto the centre green here. The Pirates then coming forward, stepping onto the podium, and there they are. It's the Knockout Cup Champions, the Elite League Knockout Cup Champions for 2004. It is the Paul Rias Pirates, and a jolly bunch they look. And uh, congratulations to them for the Pirates. So uh, the many photographers that are gathered around us and the local cameras as well from the local media gathering around and it's uh, champagne moments. <laughs> yeah. So the champagne is flowing and I guess as you keep winning the sweet taste of champagne you never get uh, fed up with that and <laughs> poor Magnus Zettelstrom suddenly left all on his own at the top of the podium tears of joy or champagne running down his face we're not quite sure but uh, Neil Middleditch certainly now in the thick of the action and uh, he's gonna get it big style as the hose comes out and uh, he's certainly getting a drenching and uh, if Steve puts that on next to my uh, Efforts with Shane Park, he got a nice back-to-back -back double soaking there. And uh, Neil Middleditch, I'm sure, will be overjoyed. And no doubt he's got a spare set of clothes in the car, as always. Uh, We're here, we've got the management, and we've got the double-double. Two trophies for the prize of one. Matt, you must be so proud of these guys. We are, you know, I've, we've always said that the, the way championships and trophies are won are on track, but off track is vitally important. And today really showed you know, Mike and I put an awful lot of effort in off, you know, out of season. Neil Milovic is just exceptional. These riders, you see people like this, they absolutely love Christoph Kasperzak and the rest of them. We're, we're over the moon. It's great for the fans. And uh, now we've just got to do it again, haven't we? Absolutely. Mike, got to say, Ipswich, they came here full of confidence that they could have possibly taken us today. They thought that they may have been able to take us in the league, but the Pirates have proved supreme again. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there were one or two pre-match problems, if you like, with the Ipswich lineup, which we weren't happy about. But obviously, for the sake of Speedway and the sake of these fantastic supporters, we didn't want to hold the match up, although we did ride under protest. But the, the crowd pulled us through, the riders were fantastic, and we're now on for maybe a treble treble. Let's hope so. Thanks. Magnus, it started out in controversial circumstances, but in the end, the Pirates proved what they needed to out on the track. That's right, you know... Uh... Yeah, it's so nice to do this one because especially after what they have been saying, you know, that we shouldn't have won the title, you know, because they seems to be stronger. But we are shown today that we are the best team and we deserve this one. It's the best possible end to the season, do you agree? Absolutely. I mean, uh, now the winter is going to be so easy to look forward to, you know. So, um, yeah, I really look forward to it. OK, well, we wish you a happy Christmas and a happy New Year and we hope that we'll, we'll be seeing you again in 2005. Thank you very much. And I wish everybody a good Christmas as well. Antonio, you've just been awarded the most entertaining rider for 2004. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I, um, I have not think about this prize. We don't have anything like this in Sweden. So I coming here to England, I get this prize. That is means really much for me. For then I, I see the crowd and uh, yeah, 
them, uh, they like me, so that is really fun to get something like this. They certainly do. And I have to say that your form all year has been outstanding. You've been a real star for me. And I'm sure all the fans watching this will agree with that. Yeah, that, this year has been so wonderful for me. That is my first year, like, uh, going uh, in two different countries, and I didn't uh, thought it uh, should be this good, but uh, I have come here and uh, I have so much fun in this team, and Neil and Matt and everyone who work for us, and the work around us, has helped me really much, so that's, I have been so pleased to come here and ride for them, that is so much fun. Well, I know that everyone will be asking, are you coming back in 2005? You've hinted that it is, it's possible, it may be possible, but I guess, is it too early to say? No, uh, I can't just say, that is, uh, the chance of coming back for next year is really, really big, so we just come to uh, speak a little more with Matt and we'll see what's happening. Okay, well, we hope to see you. Have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you. Look forward to 2005. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, Ryan, it's uh, finally here. The double-double has arrived, and it's everything that we hoped for. Yeah, I mean, uh, we knew it, was, it wasn't going to be easy, but we've been pretty dominant here the last uh, few meetings, few weeks, and, uh, you know, everyone was coming into good form. So uh, we were quietly confident, but not overconfident, and uh, those boys are good here. If anyone was going to push us, they were, but um, we all went out and did our job, and uh, it was good enough. I think what works for me is that it's really proved the pool dominance this year, despite what Ipswich and Wolverhampton have said about pool, they've proved it out there where they need to. Exactly, they can say what they want, but we've been consistent and uh, we've won the two trophies. Well done. Thank you. Daniel, for the second time we've got to say well done, and uh, this double-double, it really is fantastic for the Pirates. Yeah, we've been winning everything we've been, we've been racing in this year, so it's superb. Today, unfortunately, was not so great for you. Mechanical problems. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's first my second hit. I broke the fuel pipe, which made the bike didn't get enough fuel, so it didn't run properly. And then I had problems, probably with the uh, magic box in my last two. And it's it's all it's typical. It happens when you only got one bike and not all your equipment here. Okay. Well, we wish you the very best. Yeah. Thank you. And I want to wish everyone a happy new, a merry Christmas and a happy new year. Bjarni and Christoph, you are the two riders that uh, had really have got the double-double because, of course, you were both involved last year, so it really is a double-double for you both. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, this year is, is a special year. Last year was the first year where we were win, win the all, but, you know, this year feels so good. And for you to be in the side and to pick up the trophy for real this time, great, great for you. Yeah, uh, great. This year is very good for me. It's, I have good engine. It's everything okay. I wish you both a very happy Christmas and a happy New Year. Yeah. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Matteo, first it was the uh, Elite League. Now it's the Knockout Cup. Does it feel as good? Yeah. You know, I never been on this situation before, and I'm really proud that I come back to Pool. That's really the best club in England. I'm really appreciate that and. I'm very happy, yeah. Thank you. I think we're very happy to see you here too. It's been fantastic today. It's been great all season to see your form blossoming. And uh, we're very much hoping that we'll see you in 2005. Is it too early yet to say? Maybe it's too early because we didn't spoke nothing about that. But I hope I will be back. I would like to, you know. That's the best place to be. And, you know, it's good for my head and uh, keep it on, you know. Thank you. Yeah, uh, great to see you. And I uh, wish you a very happy Christmas and a happy new year. You too. Thank you very much.